Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about a rifle that is brand new to the market. Uh, you already know what it is from the thumbnail and the title of this video. We are going to be talking about the Global Ordnance Monolith. This is a very interesting rifle. I saw this for the very first time back in January at SHOT Show 2024, and then was actually able to revisit this at TriggerCon just last month and actually put some rounds through one. And I was really surprised with what I saw um, just from that experience. I now have one in my hand, and I'm going to be able to give you my initial thoughts of the first 200 rounds through this, um, and some things that I like, some things that I don't like, and I go from there. Now, full disclosure, this was sent to me by Global Ordnance. Uh, they also sent some ammo for me to use for the testing of this, but I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. As mentioned, I'm going to talk about the good things with the bad things, and let you guys decide whether or not this is right for you. With all of that being said, I really think that this is something that could challenge the idea of what an AR adjacent style rifle can be. I know there's going to be a lot of people in the comment section that's going to be like, oh, this isn't an AR-15. I get it. You're bringing some actually energy to this <laughs> comment section, but Essentially, this is going to be very similar to an AR-15 in the fact that the manual of arms and the controls are going to be almost identical. So let's dive into what's really going on with this rifle and why it's called the Monolith. That comes from the barrel and the technology behind that. It is a collaboration between Global Ordnance and FN Products or Foxtrot Mike. The barrel is going to be turned out of one piece of bar stock. So the barrel, barrel extension, gas block, and muzzle device are all one piece, which does a lot of really interesting things and helps a number of different aspects of this rifle be um, a little bit better, I think, than a normal AR-15. How do they do that? Well, first and foremost is this is a 16 inch barrel version. They do offer a 12.5 inch barrel version, but this is going to be 16 inches to the end of the muzzle device. And they're able to do that because this isn't threaded on. This is machined out of the barrel itself. So you don't have to worry about pin and welding anything. It's already done uh, from the get go. The next thing is the Issues with putting muzzle devices on um, barrels is concentricity issues. Concentricity issues, if I can't even say that word correctly. Uh, I keep on messing it up. Uh, but essentially, you don't have to worry about adding this uh, muzzle device on and making sure that you have shims done correctly, making sure that it's threaded on correctly. You don't have to worry about timing the muzzle device. It's all done for you. So that's something that I really, really do like. Moving back from there, the gas block uh, being integrated into the barrel as well solves a lot of issues when it comes to tolerance stacking because you don't have to worry about the gas port size of the barrel being smaller or larger than that of the gas port size on the gas block. Uh, you don't have to worry about the ports being lined up correctly. You don't have to worry about gas seeping out around the gas block in the barrel where it's made it up. Uh, so that allows for fewer issues when it comes to tolerance stacking and allows for uh, Global Ordnance and Fox Art Mike to be more precise on that gas port size to tune this a little bit better as well. Now, the first question that a lot of people are going to ask is, isn't an adjustable gas block? And the answer is no, not yet anyway. That is one area that I would love to see them improve right from the get-go is having an adjustable gas block here. Because what that does is it solves the problem when it comes to the springs back here. Now, Global Ordnance does offer standard and suppressed weight springs for you to swap out, whether you're going to run it unsuppressed or suppressed, but you could eliminate that aspect by just adding the adjustability aspect to 
this gas block. So that's one area that I would love to see them improve. There's a couple other areas we'll talk about throughout this video as well. So as mentioned, the recoil spring and recoil spring guide is going to be uh, in the upper receiver. This is going to be based off of the operating system from Foxtrot Mike. So uh, you have your forward control handle, uh, charging handle up front here, which makes you believe that this is like a piston operated system. And it's not, it's not gas piston. It's still going to be uh, direct impingement. But what they've done is they've captured everything up here in the upper receiver, allowing you to have a bufferless design so that you can collapse the buttstock if that's a thing for you. Another thing that that does is it really ends up lightening this rifle up quite a bit because you don't have to worry about buffer weights and springs and a buffer tube and castle nuts and back plates. Uh, all of that is captured in the upper receiver. The barrel being one piece reduces weight as well. So you're looking at a weight of five pounds, 14 ounces right out of the box, which is quite possibly one of the lightest ARs or AR style rifles, uh, carbine length, 16 inch carbine length rifle that I have in my collection. So that's another really cool aspect of this particular rifle as well. All right, so let's move on back to the controls on this. This is going to be fully ambidextrous uh, with the exception of the charging handle here. Uh, it's not ambidextrous as it stands right now. You do have to disassemble it, pull it out, swap it over to the other side. However, all of the controls back here are going to be ambidextrous. You have uh, your magazine release and bolt release here. You also have a selector, a safety selector on this side as well. And then same thing on this side. The really cool aspect of this, the design that I thought was very forward thinking is when you have the bolt locked back to the rear, you have the ability to drop the bolts by just pushing down on the dust cover, which is very much similar to like a Magpul bad lever. But a lot of people have issues with the bad lever because then you have to flip a switch inside your trigger well. And a lot of people are concerned that that could cause negligent discharges. Whereas having it up here against the dust cover then allows you to have your finger out of the trigger well, away from the trigger, and then you're still able to drop the bolt just by pressing down on the dust cover, which I thought was a really cool design. I really did like that. I've been running drills where I'm, you know, firing the rifle at a target a couple of times, doing a two or one round reload type of setup, insert that next magazine, pressing down and getting back up on target. Uh, has been a lot quicker than the normal process. I'm sure there's plenty of people that can do a uh, reload drill faster than I can with a standard AR, but I just like that, uh, that, that idea, that design was uh, pretty interesting. So there's that. One of the downsides to the ambidextrous controls is going to be, um, they're pretty sticky out of the box. Uh, so you have your mag release over here on the left side. You really got to push that thing down um, to get that magazine to release. So I'm pushing down and I'm really got to push that magazine release pretty hard on uh, the left side. The right side, no problem. I can do that with my index finger, even with my arthritis in my hands. <laughs> but when I was allowing uh, the camera guy, Hefe, to uh, run this, he's left-handed. One thing that he pointed out was trying to actuate the safety lever on this uh, was pretty difficult. Uh, it is very, very sticky from the right side. The left side, no problem, no problem whatsoever. Uh, but you know that detent is um, pretty new and needs to be broken in, I'm sure. So just sitting here and rotating this uh, by hand a few hundred times and over here doing the same thing. Um, yeah, you're going to need to break these controls in a little bit right out of the box. So just something that Global Ordnance might look into a little bit, see if there's uh, a little bit more precision that they could get when it comes to these controls and making them a little bit easier for, um, you know, to actuate them from either side. Just uh, my, my thoughts there. 
This is going to have a flat face trigger on here and uh, it's pretty standard. Uh, it's going to be very similar to uh, a two-stage mil-spec trigger. Somewhere around that five and a half, six pound mark on the uh, trigger weight. Uh, it does have a B5 Systems pistol grip, which is one of my favorite pistol grips, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's move on back to the buttstock. And uh, this is going to be very tactical Ugg boot style of a buttstock, very ACR or scarish style. It's very similar to that of what we saw on the PSA Jackal and the fact that it has uh, seven different positions that you can adjust the length of pull on. It does have a comb riser here, uh, but of all the different things that I love about this rifle, this buttstock is not one of them. And the reason for that is the way that this is set up is uh, just not conducive for a lot of different people. For me, I usually keep this around that uh, position four or position five, and that allows me to then be able to get in behind my optic on this cheek riser right here. But for individuals who are taller than me, anyone above five foot eight inches, <laughs> you're probably going to have to extend that buttstock even further, and that's going to put your uh, cheek well somewhere around this void. So individuals who are taller, who are getting in behind right here, you're now going to get the back edge of this cheek well or the front edge of this rear buttstock section right up against your face. So either it's punching you in the front from the cheek well or it's jabbing you in the back from the buttstock in, in your jaw. So aesthetically, it looks pretty cool, uh, but functionality, it's not the greatest, I can tell you that right now. You can fold this over. Uh, it, there has a bit of a detent on here, so it will stay up uh, a little bit. You know, it kind of hangs down just a little bit, but not too bad. You can feel that detent right there. And it also even comes with a little bit of a storage compartment inside the buttstock as well. You can put some batteries or maybe an extra firing pan or something like that in there should you want to. So. There is an overview of everything going on with this rifle. Uh, now let's talk about my shooting experience because that's really where this shines. The first five rounds of this rifle, just shooting at the berm, just to make sure that it functions, uh, was very, very surprising. Again, this is just short of six pounds, so it's fairly light. And usually with uh, lighter AR-15 style rifles, you're going to get a lot more felt recoil. But adding this J-Max style break on here, uh, it not only was really light recoiling, but super flat shooting as well. So shot those first five rounds and I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. And I'm sure that if you were able to get one of these like in the hands of Clayco, you could see how fast you could shoot and how flat it would be as well. So um, I, I would love to get one of these in his hand just to see how fast he could get it going. Um, a lot faster than me anyway. I had zero issues when the first 200 rounds, no failures to feed, fire or eject, which is very, very promising. And one of the interesting things is that, as mentioned with this gas block being a little bit more precise than a standard home-built AR-15, the ejection pattern was sitting somewhere around that 2.30 to 3 o'clock mark, and um, the brass was falling only about, I would say, probably 5 to 7, maybe 9 feet away, which was very surprising because I'm used to putting my own rifles together, like from Aero Precision or, you know, having a budget option like from Palmetto State Armory which those are typically over gassed. So those rounds are usually going like anywhere from five to 10 yards away instead of somewhere around three yards. So that was something that uh, was surprising to me and only because I'm not used to shooting something that has the gas tuned a little bit better from what I could see. So there's uh, that aspect of it. Had a lot of fun at the range. I only brought 200 rounds and when I was done with that, I was like, oh man, I wish I had another 200. But we're going to dive into uh, how well this shoots suppressed and its accuracy in a follow-on video because 
Uh, if I kept that in this video, it was going to be like 30 to 45 minute <laughs> video and I want to break it up for you guys. So, um, so far so good. Uh, I think that there's some areas that uh, Global Ordnance can improve on. I do know that they're going to offer this in different calibers in the future. They're going to start off with 762 by 39, which I thought was an interesting choice. I would expect 300 Blackout to be the next offering, but whatever reason, I think 762 by 39 is going to be the next one we see. Probably, um, probably shot show time frame. Uh, they're also going to offer a different uh, mounting solution here on the muzzle. A lot of people may not like the chemo adapter. They may want to direct thread. So they are looking into offering that setup as well. So some more things coming with this particular setup. Um, I'm excited to see what happens. I've had a lot of fun shooting this and I think that this is going to be a really, really cool rifle uh, for a lot of different people. But again, I also know it's not for everybody. So more videos to come and I'm ex really excited just to get going on this. Try to get the round count up on this as much as I possibly can. But I'm also interested in what you guys have to say. What are some of the other things that you would like to see me do? I want to try to get it out to a two gun match. Um, hopefully here soon. If not, it'll be in the spring. And uh, report back to you guys here very, very soon. I do expect to have the next video at least on the accuracy. Probably uh, the follow on video that I do. So probably next week. Uh, or if not, within the next two weeks, I'll have that video coming up as well. So again, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate your guys' uh, interest on this and seeing where we could go from here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. In the pinned comment, I'm going to leave a couple of different links. Number one is going to be to fitandfire.com so you guys can do a little bit more of a deep dive on the specifics behind this particular rifle. I'll have all the specs over there. And then I'll also leave a link to the Live Laugh LARP podcast. If you guys haven't checked that out, myself and my cameraman Hefe uh, have been doing an awesome podcast with a lot of really cool guests. We'll catch you guys over there. With all that being said, we're out of here. As always, freedom through strength, here comes a high five. Bye y'all.